So if you listen to our most recent podcast or watched it on YouTube, you know that we talked to Jeff Walter, who just released an article uh, talking about something called the loaded Dix Hall pipe. Essentially, what this article found was that just by tipping the patient's head forward about 30 degrees and waiting 30 seconds, you can improve the sensitivity of a Dix Hall pike significantly. So much so that I think their study found they only had maybe 4% false negatives mm -hmm. when it came to Dix Hall pike testing, as opposed to the 20% of a false negative that you can have with um, traditional standard Dix Hall pike testing. Um, the study also found that by tipping the patient's head forward 30 seconds before you do your Dix Hall pike, you can increase the symptom duration for BPV, which is great if you're just starting to treat vestibular and you need to have a little bit more time to identify nystagmus and figure out which direction it's moving in. Um, patients were a little bit more symptomatic with this, so you might not want to do a loaded Dix Hall pike with every single person, especially if they're prone to vomiting or they have really high anxiety about changing positions. But this is a great way to just modify a, tr a traditional standard test by a little bit to make your testing that much more better. So Kelly and I wanted to demonstrate today exactly what that loaded Dix Hall pike looks. Um, and let's go from there. Mm -hmm. So we have our, our traditional setup of the table. I like to use a pillow behind a patient's back so that I'm not dangling heads off the end of the bed. But like a standard Dix Hall pike, I'll turn the patient's head to the side I want to treat. So we're going to do a left Dix Hall pike. Now to get the loaded Dix Hall pike, I'll have the patient either tip her head forward about 30 degrees, or if you have the patient sitting up, they want to lean their body forward about 30 degrees. And that's with the head already turned at a 45 degree angle. So the idea of doing this is to preload those otoconia to the front portion of the ampulated portion of the canal. So that now you've got a further distance for those otoconia to, to travel in the canal to elicit a stronger response and to make sure that we're going to get a response if there are crystals in that canal. One thing that was brought up in the podcast was if you have a patient starting you know, back here because maybe they've got some extra adipose tissue that's preventing them from sitting up straight or their back is bothering them, if they start back here in the posterior canal, those crystals can start too far back in the canal itself so that when you go down into your Dick's Hall Pike, those crystals won't travel farther, far enough in order to elicit a strong positive response. So for the loaded Dix Hall Pike, I want to have the patient sitting up. I typically like to tilt the head forward if the patient has a cervical range of motion. Here, um, we wait about 20 to 30 seconds. In Jeff's study, they waited 30 seconds before, um, with every patient. And then from there, you go right into your standard um, movement for the Dix Hall Pike, landing with at least 20 degrees of cervical extension. So on the count of three, I'll have you lie back. One, two, three, keeping that head turned and then back um, extended about 20 degrees in cervical extension. Um, in the study, they had every patient go back in about within two seconds from sitting to lying down. Um, so be sure to check that study out, check out the loaded Dix Hall Pike, and give it a try with your patients to see if you notice a difference in the results.